being a DJ today is also being an artist, right? Before lockdown and stuff, you could get a lot of shows without. But if you really want to elevate and become something very crucial, you are not only a DJ anymore, you're an artist. And I am of the belief of music first always, but you got to understand this is a 360 situation. You need to know what you want to say. What do you want to say? What do you want to illustrate? How do you want to look? People ingest and digest like music from so many different levels. Got a fun stream today. Got a really good stream today. I'm really excited about this stream. Excited to welcome in the head of Ultra Records UK. Uh, Annie Birkeland joins Ultra Music back in 2017 when she started up EU Market Division. After the Ultra Music 2021 acquisition, Ultra Music became Ultra Records and Annie was promoted to the head of the UK. Previously, she works in publishing for years across EU as well as the US. She works in, with some of the biggest writers, producers in the world, curating songwriting caps in Denmark, with Cutfather in 2012, as well as up heading up the Sync division for Danish publishing. She's also set up and run her own labels and so much more. So let's get her in here. This is going to be a big stream. It's big exciting. If you want to drop questions in, drop them in the chat. Loz is going to create them. We'll, we'll ask them all. Let's get her in here and say, hey, Annie, how you doing? Welcome in. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for doing this. Your week must be so busy. So thank you so much for giving us this time and, and chatting to us. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be here and excited to see what we, we're going to talk about. It's going to be fun. Before we get into the series, you're in the UK, so we're good. Um, we sometimes have problems with the US. Uh, we get in, we, it's lunchtime, so we always chat about lunch a little bit. And uh, we're into the kind of meal deals, you know, the ones you get from the supermarkets, the Tesco's, the kind of sandwich twists. Do you have a go-to lunch or go-to meal deal that you, you like to do, you like to have? Oh, I must admit, I, I don't think I've ever in my life bought a meal deal from like Tesco <laughs> but I do like a good lunch you know like oh, you know you never go wrong with like a good sandwich or salad but I I will say if I eat too much during lunch I, I kind of pass out and I need to sleep really <laughs> yeah that's cool I, yeah I like a good sandwich yeah good cool okay um let's get cracking in so for those who don't know who you are can you just give us a little introduction to yourself and let's and we'll start cracking on yeah, so yeah, my name is Annie and I head up UK for Ultra Records, uh, which is a um, global electronic label that's been independent for years, founded in 94. Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's, it's long. It's like, it's, it's no <laughs> label now. Um, but in like one and a half year ago, Sony uh, Music acquired Ultra and we're no, now part of Sony, functioning as a global entity within Sony, um, with our main office in New York, uh, but we also have people across the globe. I'm in UK, of course, with the team here, with people mm. in France and Germany and Canada and Asia. So it's quite exciting. Um, and yeah, and I hit up the UK side, which of course is a is a combination of overseeing our marketing team as well as working A and R, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and what like a label entails. That's cool. But how was that? How was that? Like that? That buyout must have been a big time and a big. Was there lots of changes when that happened? It's quite. It's mad yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 a quite. It was quite a big change uh, on on several points. Of course, first of all, going from independent and then merging into a major label, there is some basic fundamental structures and mm. um, logistics in that, which of course like took a minute to kind of get our heads around. But then, other than that, uh, going from being an entity with a big, big, big publishing arm to then now solely being a label as the ultra publishing side and the ultra record side is not if, together anymore. It also changes the way that especially work on a and and how you sign and what right. the foundation for, or like the narrative for what you sign and who you sign is. Um, it actually changed quite a lot. So I feel like that's definitely one of the big changes in the new setup. That's mental. What happened with the, so, so the, cause it used to be publishing as well. Is that now gone? Is that, is that what's, or is that a separate thing completely? Yeah, so Patrick Moxie, who founded Ultra, uh, mm -hmm. he still has his publishing arm and they are working separately now. So that still exists, but we are not right. a connected thing anymore. So we function solely as record label now, which also therefore opens up like to like opens up quite a bit to how we like work in terms of getting songs for our artists and what writers, producers, et cetera, we work with. Uh, where before, of course, having like an in-house publishing arm, it was quite easy to 
go that direction every time or you know right. it's just changes the game quite a bit does it give you more freedom i'll say from my perspective yeah but again it also comes down to how you define that i guess it also is quite mm. like i think creatively it gets a bit more freedom in terms of uh, working across the board with publishers everywhere and management everywhere where of course it was a priority to keep it in-house uh, mm. when you have the publishing yourself back in days mm. but I guess there's pros and cons with both setups me personally I like to work like this Does it allow you to sign different artists that you might not have signed before like bigger and small like from from either end bigger and smaller when you have like a publishing arm etc um, there might be a few signings that you can like take directly from that side and then also sign mm. it on, on Google where what we sign now, it's it's very much angered around signing artists more long term. Where beforehand mm. we signed a lot of songs and one offs. Where now we kind of step back a bit and we're a bit more cautious about signing and the process is a bit longer than it used to be. And then mm. we focus on solely signing artists and like more long term projects in general. That's cool. That's very interesting. Like, I guess that helps with the, then the artist development. You get to work. I guess you get to work more closely with artists and work longer with artists. I guess because you're, it's a longer deal. Exactly, and it gets like you basically become like a little family that's together, like expand and grow this image both visually, sonically, positioning market wise, also with also being like a global entity, and with people in different territories. We work a lot across like um, the board and the, and the, um, uh, the borders so it's not like mm. domestically like secluded so i work on a daily basis with our u.s team our team in germany and france etc mm. therefore also the way we can grow stuff um it's like kind of with a focus on not only one territory usually of course it depends on the artist but it's, it's i like to work like that because you somewhat you build out an artistic profile sonically, visually on a long-term basis where you get mm. to like really get in deep with the artist and, and figure out how how this artist can grow and develop into something potentially bigger, which is That's very right. interesting. That's so cool. That's that must be fun as well. It must be because you are, like your background is across lots of lots of areas. So that must be that must be fun for you as well from a you get to pull in all the different all your different parts of your career as well. Oh, definitely. I would definitely recommend everyone to try and dip their toes into as many like areas of the industry as possible because there is so many areas and there's so much mm. to understand, especially when you let's say you do ANR, I think it's a it's a huge beneficial uh, beneficiary that you understand marketing, you understand mm. that markets are different for different artists mm. because when you release music, that is such a big part of it. Um, that you understand what publishing means, uh, how the like the the, the basics of a con and contractual structure, or like how you split and like points and and shares, etc. And there's like so many different aspects of it um, that come in handy to know a bit about and have been working in for sure. That's so cool. Well, let's we're definitely going to dig into loads of those parts in a bit. This is this is I'm well excited about this. It's going to be good fun. Uh, there's loads of things I like to talk about lots, and my the gang in the chat, you know, I like to talk about these loads a lot. So we're going to dig into each of those sections. But I thought I thought we'd start with you. Like, let's talk about the, you, the person, a little bit as well. Like, like, tell me about your, tell me about what, what music you were like growing up. Like, how was that, and you know, where did your love of music start? So, yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, I think I always have been surrounded by music. I'm the youngest of four siblings. Uh, all very much into music as well as my parents and we have like a few years between us so it feels like I got exposed to all the different decades and genres <laughs> from like from different siblings and, and parents which kind of gave me a very like broad um, you know spectrum in terms of what kind of music I'm into I used to like Jimi Hendrix one of my all-time favorites uh, mm. There's a lot of Mamas and Papas, Pink Floyd. The Chronic was one of my favorite albums when I was nice. a teenager. Uh, love a good hip hop. Um, Nirvana, <laughs> like so much. even Erika Badu, Shaka Khan, um, jazz. I listen to Stan Getz every morning. Girl from nice. Indonesia. Such a yep. great album. Um, so yeah, I think it's been like kind of a, a 
I've been around the block musically, I guess, where electronic music for me was something I didn't really dive into and explore much before I actually started at Ultra, to be honest. No way. No way. Yeah. The, the obvious question is uh, which siblings got the best music taste? Aha. <laughs> question. I will I will put it like this. They all introduced me to different areas and therefore they all have their unique taste, which I benefited from each of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there with a cheeky one. It was too easy. <laughs> um okay, so then and then when did you start working in music? Tell me about that. Well, I actually started working in music when I was nineteen. Um no so way. it's been a few years, yeah. I've um Back then, it was there wasn't really like I'm from Denmark. I grew up in Denmark, and I moved to Copenhagen when I was like 18, 19, mm. and um, wanted to do it in the music industry. Mm. Um, and back then, there was like one education that you could take for it, and it was like very they they I think they accepted like six people a year, and it was like very difficult. So it was no like way. a different way to go about it. So you had to like hustle and grind. Of course, you have so like to like you have to do that as well today, but. Back then, I think the the like the opportunities was like different. You have a, a lot more to dive into, tailored education, all these different things that you can do now. So I took this course, and there was this guy who who spoke that I thought was super interesting. He was like in publishing, so I waited outside an elevator. I was like 19, and when he walked <laughs> in the elevator, door closed, I slid it in. I was like, Hi, <laughs> you have a job for me, and um, that's that's how I started. Wow, I love a good slide into a back into an area that you're not supposed to be in. I love that. I I, I love I love, like I, I I've done that so many times. Or or the other one is like a, a purposeful walk as you walk past someone that you're probably not allowed to go in that area. But if you just like look like you're supposed to go into that area, then then that you sometimes works. You you like the hustle is real, man. You just gotta get onto it. I have literally got away with so much crap throughout the years. That's for sure. <laughs> What's your top three hustles? Let's do this, this. I want to do this. I remember there was, there was this new club opening of a new club in Paris once. Yep. Where I were like five girls and spoke a bit of French and you like knew a bit of people, but you can get like far with a bit of confidence. So there was this club opening and it was a huge line. Back then I worked on Steve Aoki and he was like playing um, – a show the week after. So I walked like up past the line, completely confident and went up and said, well, I'm considering having his after party here next week. Um, so what are you saying? So we ended up getting escorted in in front of the whole queue, got free champagne, got free tables, got a tour of the club, everything. And no way there was like any chance there was an after party. But, you know, you can get away with quite a bit. <laughs> Oh, that's a good hustle. That's a very good hustle. That's cool. <laughs> that's wicked. Oh, I love that. That's very cool. Okay, so then we started working in publishing, and I, I'm literally trying to drill con- publishing into my into my eye into, to everyone in this dis- in my Discord in my community, and and also my my course members. But can we just chat about publishing and like literally like, let's let's go basics, and then why should people why should the aspiring artists think about it? Why should they? consider it why should they be you know interested in it let's just let's tell it let's tell it to them fresh man yeah of course i think like it, we all know that there's like two sides of the coin there's the master rights and there's the publishing rights and the master rights is controlled by the one who owns the physical now it's digital but we still call it that and, and then the publishing right is all the rights for for the writers and the people that's been part of the song creation but does not own the actual monster which of course is a big job there's there's been like a lot of talks of of course over the years about allocating more to the writers etc as i think is very fair uh, i think it's, it's a side that hasn't been like appreciated enough always and i think there might be some changes that hopefully uh, over the, the next course but publishing is is several things um Publishing as a core is, for example, writing, being signed on the publishing deal as a writer or producer. You have a publisher and you get pitched in for sessions and these sessions can be specifically for projects or it can be writing for pitch music where then you publish your manager or whoever pitch out these songs for different artists. Um, a good example, I got pitched in a song uh, from a manager, which was a song 
by a writer and a producer. And I mm-hmm. send it to one of my ex who got the stems, remade it. The singer kept on as a feature and mm-hmm. um, producer is credited as a writer because it was mm-hmm. like reproduced. And now this song is coming out in June, you know, that like Amazing. that's how works yeah um so like when did that process start when did that process start yeah a while ago and then there was like a bit of a hold up on it but then when we first got the parts it went very fast because it was like a perfect fit for this artist Mm. um so like but that's how so for example my job as a and Ring, like these different acts on the ultra records roster i get piss and pitch songs daily from both publishers and and managers, etc., because then they sit on these catalogs or like not catalogs that's released music, but they sit on these like banks of songs that might make sense. Um, and then certainly when something uh, clicks, um, it might become an actual release. And then the people within that song, of course, gets uh, either bought out or get rights on the song. Uh, depending on what deal terms that you negotiate, I guess. I guess the whole publishing thing from a, from from a lot of our audience is obviously the DJ producer. They 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 are the songwriter. They own the song. They write the music. They they sing the theme tune. They you know they, they're all it. It all sort of sits in one person. So I guess then they are the only rights, and that's it. Makes it easier for the DJ producer type person. Totally. I think in that scenario, like you're not necessarily. In that scenario, if you're, for example, an up-and-coming artist and stuff, I would probably hold off on giving away my publishing for a minute to see what happens and see how everything develops. Because a good thing usually as well is that you can get a quite a big advance or whatever if the deal is right on a publishing deal, um, which can keep you afloat if you need some cash to kind of create a music and grow something. Another thing is as well, if you start having out like quite a bit of music, some of these publishers again want to buy maybe or represent your catalog and they mm. can start like really pitch it in for sync and that can be a very good way uh, to get in some very good money um if car commercials just, or right, whatever mm. yeah so the uh, sync sync is sync is obviously uh that's putting your music to things isn't it to 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 like you say car commercials or other things, isn't it? Exactly. So that's another way of publishing. So when you, for example, work sync, you can rep- represent both the master and the publishing rights, which mm-hmm. when you when you get a sync placement, you get 50-50 to each side. You can also represent both sides. But basically, as a sync agent, they, they pitch in catalog music, so actually created music or released music, but they can also pitch in for bespoke or songs that are in the creation process. So... That can be another way where publishing can be quite beneficial, especially if, for example, say you are independent releasing via like a distro service and you don't have anyone there pitching for sync for your master rights. Um, it could make sense to kind of get someone on board to pitch it if it's syncable music. That's really cool. That's really cool. Okay, cool. And then uh, you've worked with some big artists in writing camps. How does they work? How does that work? And do you have any fun stories? Oh, yeah. There's quite a few stories. It's like when I did that, like a lot, it was it's quite a few years ago, to be fair. Yep. Of course, we've done the, the occasional camp, especially in the old ultra setup where we had the publishing arm, which is hmm. uh, usually you probably do camps more in that setting than label, other than, hmm. of course, you do one in a while, but it's definitely more a publishing thing I would say but yeah it was um, it was quite interesting I was very young uh, I was very <laughs> and new uh, but it was definitely interesting to kind of get a foot in and see how these processes in the studio so we would do like a week of camps in Copenhagen Danish producers and international songwriter songwriters it would be who did we have we had Oh, a lot of them still friends of mine today because it's been so long ago. We've known each other for years, but it was the likes of Clarence Coffey Jr., Nate James Newman, or Camille Purcell, Megan Cotone, um, mm. Ian James, Ed Dewey. There was like a lot of great writers. And mm. I remember one uh, camp, Becky Hill was there as well. It was before she kind of blew up. Nice. And we had this song called False Alarm that was written by James Newman and I can't remember the name of the other writer but then Becky was supposed to lay down the vocals and I had to drive her through the airport and I was like we have like seven minutes so she just like laid down the vocals one take it sounded fucking brilliant it got pitched out and Matoma made it a single so that's his single false alarm 
And I think no they way. even pitched the vocals. Yeah. So that was kind of an interesting story, like situation also to see something come to life from actually the creation point to the vocal recording mm-hmm. and then to actually being pitched and becoming, yeah, a global song, you know? That must be um, mental. That, yeah, that sounds kind so cool. Of, um, and there's so many funny stories. We used to go karaoke and we all had to pick a song and with all these writers that like fucking sings like crazy good. And mm. it was, I had to pick a song too. And I remember it kind of got announced while I was at the toilet and I just stayed at the toilet because I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I was and I was like waiting to someone picked it up and I was like, oh, I'm sorry I missed it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh but my yeah, God. A lot of crazy stuff happens when you're like that intimately together for like a week straight. You definitely get to know each other, you know. They're like boot camps, aren't they? They're kind of you go and you spend the whole week, and yeah, that's this is that's the vibe, isn't it? Yeah, and they're various. Like in this, these camps we're like working with six studios where people are rotating either one or tw- one or twice a day, you know. And um, yeah, late nights, early mornings, you know. It was it's a lot of fun, and but it's also very intense. I bet tiring about as well by the time you get to the end of the week late nights <laughs> yeah, yeah you're dead <laughs> <laughs> um okay and then let's then let's move on so then ultra um let, let's talk about let's talk about music and let's talk about ultra and records and let's talk about a and r and like let's talk about the music you're signing um obviously you you've got this new job which is great it's amazing congratulations well thank you very much <laughs> How long have you been in the role? When did that happen? And yeah, what's, what's, what's... It's been like a bit more than a year now. So I started officially in this role in March 2022, hmm. much be. So yeah, yeah. A, year and a few months. So it's definitely been taking a minute to kind of get everything established and settle in. Also having to kind of pick up like when you merge like this how and who is taking care of what and who is the lead what so we also got like a full blown almost new A&R team across the board so there was like quite a few things that needed to fall into place but I feel like we're getting there and and everyone is like starting to know what what's up you know and there's like a good flow (laughs) So what do, um, then? What does was was your role entail? Let's talk about your role as a whole, and then let's look at day to day. Yeah. So basically, as the head of UK, I'm like responsible for what happens in the UK uh, in terms of everything that we release. How uh, do we plan on handling the market? Uh, mm-hmm. What do we want to work actively? What makes sense for UK? Radio wise, mm-hmm. press wise, digitally, etc. What is our UK? priorities combined with what is our global priorities so mm-hmm. it's like a, a weekly thing that we discuss on our global calls where i'm then supposed to be the one that knows the uk market you know <laughs> or whatever well you must, um, you must do that's cool i'm trying and just like <laughs> got your gut feeling in some sense i guess <laughs> i have mike as well on the team here who's a senior marketing manager who is like the running point on our pitching for both radio and digital etc uh, cool. if we don't facilitate it out to pluggers or likely mm-hmm. we then also see how we can grow ourselves and our presence in terms of brand collaborations and with yeah, closing brands and local like entities putting on showcase if if, if it makes sense we had an amazing showcase with Icona Pub uh, in the vault at the net, which was great having people down. We had a great showcase with Annabelle England a cool. year back. There's like all these different things that we do to kind of activate our our presence on a more like local basis. Same time, we Mark is, Mike is like running point on all our marketing campaigns for the different artists, especially the UK signed artists in collaboration mm-hmm. with me, of course we try to kind of communicate as much as we can about it and then i am leading the A&R on a majority of, like, a part of the roster which is all of the uk signed and a lot of the euro european signed x we have wow that's a busy day how's your, and then how's your day-to-day work that must be must be frantic yeah but i think you just you learn how to dabble and you learn how to somewhat <laughs> make to uh, prioritize, prioritize what's what's the most important, etc. And it changes a lot throughout the weeks, I must admit. 
some days and weeks are more frantic than others and hmm. some days you have a lot of priorities and some weeks you it's a bit more on the low key you know so it varies quite a lot but i i listen to a lot of music on a daily basis that's for sure it was cool it was funny as we're coming in gang in the chat it was like i've just, we've got five minutes i can go and listen to three more tracks and and just <laughs> and and literally like getting in there while in between time that's, that's something i do a lot as well so I love that. Where are you? So obviously, like a year, like you started your role a year ago, like a year, like as we came out of the pandemic, the whole sound was big kind of songs and big kind of, you know, just moment of songs, I guess. And now the the, the UK definitely seems to have moved into a fast paced, you know, dance floor focused vibe. Where is Ultra sitting in that? Where 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 is your thoughts on that? And yeah, I think you know Ultra as being like originally also a US label we have a, like quite a big range uh, of like more US leaning sound and UK more leaning sound as well as European so the, mm. like I feel like the spectrum is quite broad but we definitely have quite a big focus on this what do we call it the spit up summer yeah which is quite interesting this like there's some tendencies right now that we definitely can't ignore but I think it's like a balance of of, of uh, being aware of that and, and pacing that as well as like being true to the artist and what mm-hmm. kind of sci- sound they have and bring to the table and see how you somewhat can manage to find a medium that works beneficial for both the market as well as the artist. Um, but I feel like even though we are very aware of these tendencies, et cetera, and have a big focus point, it's always artist music first, you know, mm-hmm. um, I would say. I love I love the term sped up summer. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> they would it definitely that a lot. That's for sure. <laughs> it definitely definitely feels it. I I, I mean I'm, a, I'm a, I like it. It's cool. And then and then let's and then let's talk like let's say my daughter's watching this uh, and thinking, wow, a badass uh, head of head of a massive UK label. How does she get to do where you get to had to be? Um, what advice would you have for her? I think as we like talk about or touch base on earlier, like the whole thing of like just grinding, seeing the opportunities. Mm. And I always say be a sponge. I am a constant sponge. Like I'm getting taught so much by people that works on the teams and that I have hired as well in the past. And uh, there's so many different tendencies constantly. There's no way you can be like, completely entwined with everything so therefore listen to your peers help your mm-hmm. peers and collaborate if you want to succeed in this is team effort a hundred percent and if you don't do that and don't accept that i don't think you will get far it's a constant grind study be the best at what you do you know uh, mm-hmm. at the same time collaborate across the board and and listen when people have something to say that's cool. Okay, let's dig into the role more. Uh, you, you mentioned about A and R. What are you signing right now? And what? what? And, and uh, are you signing? So, Ultra's obviously a big, the big label. Do you have sub labels? Do you sign stuff across that? Like, how does that work? Does that work from your side? So, I think like Ultra as like a, a brand and a label is like the, we do have some sub things but our main thing is ultra records as a label where with the merger we kind of went back to the basics of ultra and being a core electronic dance label um a lot of people would say edm and shout that but i don't think that's a term we use anymore (laughs) Mm. i would more call us electronic and dance and it's quite interesting that after we went back to this core of that and signing them all long-term artists we we have a broad spectrum of, of different kind of electronic artists but everyone with an electronic element and that's like kind of the core um we like working very intensively on the icona pop album coming out later this year and cool. which is an interesting example of like these two amazing ladies from sweden that have this cool visual integrity combined with like an interesting following um and they wanted to kind of lean more into straight up like club tunes etc and see how they they're growing into that is very interesting um combined with a signing like austin mills which is a bit more k tronada leaning and he's known for his tiktok and he's like remix mm. video and a rooftop somewhere and a jay warrior or solado or there's so many different acts on ultra and it's interesting to see how we try and work that's um, and it's fun to work different genres, you know. 
No way you've signed that guy, Austin Mills. I see that guy, Austin Mills, and literally, like, when you're searching for trending audios on Instagram, he literally pops up all the time. As yeah. I, I literally, I don't think I ever, I don't even know what the guy, I don't think I know what the guy looks like. I literally just know it from, I see the trending audio, and they're always little banging little trending audios. <laughs> How does that work with kind of working with, uh, is he working on four hour? Like, what's the, what's the vibe there? But, you know, he's just very interesting. I feel like he's one of the guys who really cracked the code on on how to work his socials and has, like, built, like, a very big entity uh, entity and, like, awareness of his brand and him as an artist. And we have uh, mapped out the first couple of songs leading into his first EP on Ultra Soon. And it's been very interesting. It's been with features like... Alina Barras and uh, Sabrina Claudio and Estelle and he's like he's That's a cool. very fucking cool dude which uh, like really understands how to kind of combine his music with his visuals um, mm. and yeah I do personally really like the music as well but it's yeah, interesting yeah I do I, I think I do as well I think whenever I hear it and I'm like this is so cool like every time I see you, like I said I, I literally only know because every time I see a trending audio and I'm like I wonder because I, I sort of dig into that and like look at the the name of it and it's always there's so many over his that get used all the time and that's mad that he's but it's also a challenge like that to go from that and then walk into like being like creating a project musically as an artist right and I think he really managed to do that well you know so you should definitely check out his latest releases they're awesome um, do you think it's you said about your control in the visual and the audio do you think that's important for artists do you think do you think that's the difference between DJs and producers and making music and artists they 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 think about everything like that as being a dj today is also being an artist right before lockdown and stuff you could get a lot of shows without but if you really want to elevate and become something very crucial you are not only a dj anymore you're an artist and i am of the belief of music first always but you got to understand this is a 360 situation. You need to know what you want to say. What do you want to say? What do you want to illustrate? How do you want to look? People ingest and digest like music from so many different levels now. As you said, you saw one of the like trending audios on Instagram. That's a very interesting thing, right? Because that's how you got familiar with someone that already mm. says that, okay, this is an, in, that's a very important maybe outlook or avenue for a lot of people to explore and acknowledge certain music styles or artists, etc. So right now being a whole package, a whole image is super important. I would say if you want people to listen, you need people to tap into you, not only your music, but you as a person, as an artist, as whatever a message you have, you know? Yeah. It's mad how it's like, yeah, the trending audio, the trending, it's like, it's like part, being part of the, you know, looking in the CD liner notes, you know, it's like finding that one person that's just part of, that's what, that's what me, that's why I look through the trending audios and try and find, you know, especially when you're getting served similar music, like similar music that always works on your, so on the content you're making. And, and then you start going, Oh look, it's the same person. Oh look, it's the same person. Oh, it's the same person. Yeah. It's interesting that like you're saying now he's bringing out actual music and that journey for then from being that person that just makes those trending clips to now being an, expanding into full that must be a, an exciting journey to be on yeah it's a super exciting journey it's also exciting to work with artists that are so aware and of what they want to be and how they want to be it mm. and how they want to look it i think of course you still could can be like a, a more faceless artist and stuff but if you look at it the bigger picture we are leaning more and more towards entities in a broader scale where you really are more than just your music. And I think mm. it's very important to think about uh, a lot if you really want to become a big artist or, or get people to actually listen to your music. And then you mentioned that kind of pop. They um, Let's talk about them. Um, I know we've got a track to play from them. Yeah, so no, I, so the reason why I, I wanted to like kind of outline this track is because I thought it was very interesting how they also like angled this like high uh, BPM kind of mm. track and see how that got received so well at the same point as well i think icona pop really managed together with our team creative team to um launch this track in a very cool way uh, on their mm. socials clips there is a feature on there and like how that whole scenario like the whole situation with those clips coming out before the track it, it was very interesting to me and i just think 
t- bearing in mind the sped up summer and where they came from and etc. This is a very interesting track to see also how it's received so well and getting so much traction. It also got spinned on on dance anthems over the weekend and like see how this kind of song even goes all the way to Radio One. You know, that's really cool. Let's give it a listen. Let's play it. That was mad. That's cool. I yeah, like that. it's definitely a high BPM sped up track for sure for the sped up summer. <laughs> <laughs> sped up summer. I want, I want t-shirts with sped up summer on. That's quite cool. I saw some questions in the chat. Which just uh, Skeleton Keys asked, that does the difference between UK and US trends in the markets cause issues? I don't think it causes issues. It's just it's, it creates opportunities and ways you have to kind of manage the different markets. So it's just about being aware of how and where you plan on pushing your records but there is like some stuff crossover and works both places and Mm. some stuff don't so there you also have the whole euro dance thing which is probably not a uk thing but it works very well in germany or like so it's just about Mm. knowing what markets you want to focus on and understanding what um sound is is appreciated in that current market Rob Weiss asks, is Ultra Focus signing on signing TikTokable songs at this time? Yes and no. I think signing TikTokable songs is definitely something that is on our radar and is something that we discuss. I think it it comes down to two things. Like sometimes it makes sense uh, to sign something as well that like that works there. But again, from my perspective and my side of like the NR team, I'm a bit more focused on long term artists, etc. But Ultra, mm. of course focus on it to a certain extent but it's a very interesting like market and it's very fast paced and when something p- pops up the bidding war begins and it's also about figuring out what makes sense for you where as ultra if that was the case it would probably only make sense for us to do it in U- us right okay cool Oh yeah, that 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 must be ma- ma- mental time when the bidding war when when the track's just like blowing and then you're like, do we go in? Do we do not go in? Do we? Is this for yeah. us? Is it, that must be crazy. Yeah, it is kind of crazy, but that's also when you start partnering up with other labels. And for example, you say, okay, let's sign it together. You, we get the US, you get that, and like so that's a whole like mechanism that kind of gets started, and it can look look in in many different ways. You know, look like a lot of different ways. The big label job, the big labels, it's, that's a, there's so many different entities that like, like running small labels is just, you don't even think about, you just think about signing tracks and putting them out. And there's so much stuff, more stuff to think about, which is crazy, which is cool, but it's, it's, a, it's a fun, it's a different, different world. It really is, but it's also the same world, you know, it's, there's like, but it is different. Yeah. So you're talking about, you're talking about artists when you're signing long-term projects, like how do you sign records? Like where do people, do you, you, People send you demos. Do you work with my managers? Like, say, say one of our one of our audiences making like someone on our audience like is making fast, sped up summer music. They've got a good kind of ten tracks that they're working on, which are quite cool. What's the process for that for you from a, from a from an ultra point of view? I am trying to listen to everything I get sent, but I yep. get sent a lot, you know, and it's it's about time really but i have made like a promise to myself to try and give everything a bit of attention and at least get back to it even though it's months after after i tried to get back to it i think the process of sending of course there is emails there is instagram there is like all <laughs> different things, and you can always try and send it across and we'll try and listen I think that's that's the best I can say. We don't really have like a specific email that you could send to, but it's just about sending across. And I get stuff from artists directly. I get stuff from managers, from publishers and stuff. So also the process of signing comes very randomly. Mm. I would say it's about the communication and the constant like interaction in the market and within like the industry. And from that c- conversations arise and, and you have talks and it's it's quite an organic process for me at least i would say that's cool that's nice at least and then artist wise like are you signing really big artists are you signing stuff that you can develop along the way like like say for instance our new artist he's probably got 500 followers on instagram he's probably is he too small is there is there is there is there a ceiling limit or is it just good music it's good music and you can you can build an artist along that from some really tiny to to be a bigger artist or how's that work 
I think it's always relative. I feel like, but as a rule of thumb, we usually sign X when a bit of stuff has happened because mm. our setup uh, is the best when it happens. So if there is a bit of, uh, uh, if, if there's a bit of a, like a situation going on, maybe you started getting gigs and you have a few songs out, there is like a present on socials and, and on, on streaming, et cetera. That's usual, uh, usually like the, the, the time that Ultra makes sense to sign. But again, yeah. it's everything is relative. I just signed this amazing, in my opinion, act uh, that's called Tribalism, which is a very, very new act. Uh, they're actually out of Denmark and they're like three guys that got together during COVID mm. and they created this sound, which is just, ugh, I'm in love with it. And <laughs> I, instantly, even though they have no presence, they have like 700 followers on Instagram and they put out two tracks before and everything is very new. But why I thought it specifically was very interesting as well, because they had a lot of music. So in mm. that sense, it made sense for me to also jump on it because it was not like, oh, they created two songs and then I signed them on free albums and like no more music is coming, you know? It was like, I, we could see that, okay, this is this makes sense, you know? So sometimes mm -hmm. you also take the chances on like smaller acts and stuff. So I will say it's quite relative and it depends on also the energy between me and the artist, I guess. Uh, yeah. Do we work together? Is there, I always say that these things, it's like relationship, you know? You got to mm. figure out, like, do we grow together? Have we the potential to do? Do we believe we do? Like, do we have trust? Um, I also don't sign anything before there's a trust and there is like a, 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 a collaborative feeling about this makes sense. I also mm. pitch it around internally. Is there, is there, does people like it across the board? What's the, what, what's the vibe? Because in the end, I will of course be the main person on getting the signing in but we are we are like a group effort we are like a family at ultra and everyone somewhat needs to kind of understand it and be interested and engaged about it you know hmm. um but yeah but this this new signing i'm really excited about and they're definitely a very small artist you know how much uh, mxl asks how much music is a lot of music well, like we, 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 we haven't even released the first song now. We almost finalized the first album, you know? Wow. Okay. So you, okay. your, your work when they want an album and then like, I guess through a, a singles and then an album comes and then, so it's a long, it's a long process. It is a long process. And I think it's also about being patient in these process because mm. for act like that, you need to get a, like a proper and solid plan of how do you want to get this out? The music is so good that it would be such a shame if we started releasing and no one listened. So for mm. example, with them, we went back to kind of the, the old school ways and already the first song, which is coming out uh, in the 28th of July, I think it is called Dope mm. Dance. Um, we started pitching it out to DJs already and it's been picked up in such a great manner. Like Dixon plays it, AME plays it, Kind of Music plays it, uh, Jimmy Jules, DC Ray, Chloe Calais. And we're just seeing like it, it pops up on socials everywhere um, from these amazing and really credible like DJs. And that's definitely the realm we wanted them to be placed. So already now seeing that hype makes what's the whole plan here, because then when it comes out, people are already listening. Um, and it's very interesting to see how that old school way of doing club promotion is really the way to do it again. We also saw it with Rhyme Dust and how that song just like completely exploded when it come up because it was like pitched out for like what half a year or whatever and people started to like ask for it and when is it coming so when it then mm. finally drops people are like on it as hawks you know that's um, mad so the, the old school DJ stuff's work the old, the pro, old pro, I guess I guess people are in the clubs and it's summer and it's like when we, when did that when did that process start when did you start sending that out to DJs like how long is that like, you're, like I agree with the patience <laughs> thing like how long is this? How long has this been now before releasing? Like you said, twenty eighth of July. So when's when did that start for you, and kind of how's it built? Yeah, so I don't remember when we first started putting it out, but we started to get like seen as traction start of the year when we had mm. like the final song or like I think. Let me. I'm not hundred percent sure because I can't fucking remember days from days, and I can't. Really <laughs> remember. But, um, 
uh, it's definitely the start of the spring. We started to push, send it out and we kind of made an executive decision about pushing up the single. We were planning on putting this out in September where mm. I would say like as a rule of thumb, I would already start if I could to like, like pitch these songs out if the right kind of tune like half a year before um, just to see how it reacts. And this reacted so massively that we actually pushed it up, you know, <laughs> which is a very interesting thing to see happening. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and, that's cool. And, and I guess, and I guess that's like, that's definitely actionable for like our, you know, producers and DJs in the, in the, in the chat, like they can be doing that process themselves. They can be sending it to a, a load of people that might play it and, and, getting that play before before they even before you know before they even send it out for demo I guess as well. Yeah, I think just the thing is about these things is to be very aware of what you send to who. You know, mm. it's like don't bombard anyone and make sure that the tracks you send is actually something you could see this potential DJ artist playing their sets. Because mm. if you if you send something out and it's not like the right style or direction. They have a tendency maybe not to open it again, you know? So yeah. I think that would just, that's an advice. If you want to do that, like make sure you send it out um, mm. or you make some thought about what you actually want to send out, you know, and who you send it out to. We can listen to this track. Yeah. So it's not out yet and we can listen to the full track, but there's a few Instagram clips we could play. The one with kind of music playing in the past year, maybe. It's a good example of the That's sick. That's really it's sick. Definitely yes, it's fun to see how it kind of pops off um, and how it just works. And everyone just starts singing it. And I've seen it being played out a few times live and it just resonates so massively. It's yeah, it's very interesting to see. Um, I, it's, it's got a great acid acidness to it as well. And I just I was just having a look. You said you signed them on 300 and they're now up to 1800, which is, which is, which is nice growth. How many, how many followers did you say? They're up to one eight one two now on Instagram. What? They were like seven hundred or something before. That's crazy. That's, See, that's, that's the power of the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's that was just a little nose. That's cool. That's 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 like not the sound I expected. Like I from 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 Ultra. That's that's cool. You're sounding that sort of music. That's mad. Yeah, but that's the whole thing, and that's why. I think it, that's why it's it's, it's it, uh, that's the thing that's kind of interesting to kind of underline. Like we are not just that classic EDM. Like we branch out, and I think from my perspective, this kind of music is where my heart lays a lot. You know, yeah, um, very soulful. Yeah, it's it's got it's great. It's, it's got a good good kick as well. I haven't even got a button. My buttons aren't working. I've got a button that goes. It's got something about kick. So. I can't even say the kick button. None of my buttons are working. I told you something would go wrong. I told you they'd be technical. There you uh, go. That's right. So gang in the chat, it, they're called Tripleism. I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now so you can so you can go and follow them on Instagram. There you go. We'll get some more followers from them. Super excited. We are mapping out loads of new music from them over the course of the next year. So stay tuned. That's cool. cool. That's cool. Okay, so you've signed some tracks. When it comes to the promo, you mentioned you're doing DJ promo. What else is working for you? Are you doing stuff early on TikTok? How does, like, what strategies are working? And I guess, what could you advise our producers that are pushing out their own tracks or having releases? I think consistency is key. Content is key. Um, we don't focus that much on, like, the big music videos anymore. It's about having a lot of content and being consistent with it on your profiles. Interaction yep. uh, with your fans. Being mm -hmm. present, being 
um, being tangible. It's definitely something that we see works because it's it's about fans engaged and feeling they are part of a community and parting on something that really usually moves the needle. Um, I would say other than that, there is so many different options nowadays and it varies. <laughs> from act to act like what makes sense and you see like an Austin Mills like he does these videos in the same spot like kind of vibes and it just works because somewhat now is a trademark for him so when people see it they think of him and etc etc where Mm -hmm. if you start from scratch I would say like just figure out what you want to say figure out Mm -hmm. what you want to sound like and be cohesive in your approach and think about what you want to say before you just start saying a lot of stuff. I think you have to remember you have a few chances in this game. And when you get the chance, don't don't miss it because people won't be listening always. So mm-hmm. if you get the chance, just be very, very aware of what you want to do. And of course, TikTok is a huge, huge outlet. It's also one of the outlets that is so random. You have to use a lot of money and campaign to really make sure that you get something out of it. And then stuff just randomly get picked up. Um, mm. so I think it's, it's something that's very difficult to control and at the mm. same time it's very difficult to like, important to activate we for mm. example also with the Rhine Dust which we do in US I think we have like a full like Rhine Dust like a TikTok account and like and you can really like if you have someone dedicated to kind of push these things you can get far by being mm. consistent constantly sharing mm. but again it's, it's, it takes a lot of time you know um, but yeah, visuals, content, being aware of what you want to say, how you want to say it, and then just being consistent, man. I think that's like an overall like advice. And I, I just obviously that that video we just watched was on Instagram, and I know so many DJs and producers that wanting to want to grow following on Instagram. And I was I'm always kind of worried, like because obviously TikTok was popping so much that maybe Instagram was fading, but clearly not. Clearly, clearly, it's still a great place to be. It's still a still a great place Are to you find on- your music. I'm just- do you actually yeah. use TikTok? Yeah. Okay. 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 Bad, bad example. I myself. Bad, ex- no, bad example me. Bad example me because I'm on every bloody thing. <laughs> but like I personally, what I'm turning 30 this week and I did not grow up on Instagram. So even mm. for me, like I just never got used to TikTok. Like I just, mm. I don't know how to fucking work it. I have it and I'm trying, but I'm counting on like my team, et cetera, to teach me about it because for fuck's sake I'm never like getting my head around it where the likes of kind and stuff they're also like a bit older you know like so I guess like it, it comes down to there are so many people in all the mediums now what is mm. your segment and what is your audience and mm. I think you need to be aware of, of all of them but also I think it's 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 about figuring out what medium are you most comfortable with and then focus on it you know you don't have That's to come cool. to the world today, you know yeah, agreed. A hundred percent. I'm always like, get one right and do one really white, right, and then, and then the rest sort of fall into place once you do that. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's interesting you're saying about getting your message right, and I guess that's from a plan. Like that's why you sit and plan first, and then and then do. And a lot of people just do and then work out along the way. Yeah, I think it's important to ask yourself the questions. What do I want? I think music first, but. I do say like imagery, like image and, and visuals and stuff and and like kind of the core stone of who you are as an artist is very important. And people, they they listen and people, they pick up on that shit and they will eat your life, you know, if you don't know what you want to say. And I guess like this, that video we watched was obviously a user, user generated one or is that one that you captured? Like, I guess that's a, a UGC. Which is the interesting thing. And I feel like these organic things is definitely the strongest. Of course, you can know that for sure. And it's not something you have full control over. But you can try at least and be as rounded as possible to make these things happen. Um, Okay, let's chat about campaigns. Let's talk about, obviously, you worked on a lot of good campaigns and a lot of good music over the years. What is one of the tracks you're really either a campaign you're proud of working on or a track that you worked on that you were just absolutely... It did something mad or it did something crazy. Yeah, let's, let's, have you got one? I think it was, it was kind of amazing. Like, this is a bit of an old one, but I remember when we did the Solado Ecstasy, Solado Eli Brown Ecstasy. Uh, mm. I remember the collaboration with Ministry back then as well. And we did these Pac Mans for visuals. And it was just a, a very well rounded campaign with a lot of focus. Uh, um, 
And we were ready when we started to launch it out. And I think that's why that song also did so well. Um, I don't know if you remember it. I, I, re- I, I love that track. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, it was I, the, I, I no shit. I love that track. It was definitely an interesting one, and I think that time with Solado as well, and when we did the movie Your Body with Marshall Jefferson, I remember mm. that was such an iconic record as well, and it, it got very like it was very successful too, and also just working with Solado and an icon, an iconic person like Marshall Jefferson was very interesting. And I remember we did this uh, back to back with Annie Mac. Marshall showed up with this like big necklace with a diamond covered house because he did house music. And it was just so real. All of it was just so real, you know? And the cover was just like this old, old school kind of white label thing. And it was just so Mm. real and honest, you know? How did that collab? Because I, I like, I like that, I like that track. How did that collab come about? Like, did they Solano start it, or did they just they? How did that? That was that's a that was a mad track for them to release. How did that come about? I think it was like Marshall. We did the Ten City as well back then, and yeah. he of course was founder of the Ten City, and hmm. I think that just came about throughout that relation and getting the stems, and he of course owns the track and someone gave it the to Solado and it just came about, you know? That's I don't cool. remember the specifics, but it was, it just really organic again. That's another one uh, as well, Ten City and that whole Judgment album, which got, got Gram- Grammy nominated, which was a big thing. Um, that's cool. Congrats. That, yeah, that exciting. I remember that year we were both Grammy nominated for Ten City Judgment and the Black Coffee album. Yeah. Which won which was amazing to be part of as well. Um, I was running all the, like the UK marketing on that one. And that was definitely a big, a big moment. Let me, uh, should we play another track? Should we, should we play a Solano track then? Yeah. Uh, well, I've got, maybe I've we got we... ecstasy. I, I found ecstasy. I've, I've also got the one, the Adidas one. That she, so you choose. Yeah. Also another one that might be more relevant is the one with Idris Elba, we just launched this year called Big yeah. Talk. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's one because you can play the video if you yep. search in the video. That was a big, big video oh. production of course, Idris. It never really did big numbers or anything, but I think it still deserves a, a bit of a mention. Um, maybe I love when Idris you play- Elba. It's cool. Yeah, and he's such a great guy and it was fun to work together. If you play the video, maybe just skip the intro. It's a long intro. We'll talk. Um and then go just directly into like the song. There we go. That's really cool. Really cool. I don't think I've seen that video. That's really funny. It is a good video, man. It was a it's a big production for sure. I saw, I saw I saw Mark sharing photos of the, uh, of the of the kind of days on his Facebook, and I was like, "This looks like that look like loads of fun." It is. It was a fun day. It was very intense, and also the lads they're like, "It's not usually we do this big music video for like an act like Solado and stuff, but it kind of made mm. sense with Idris being part of it and stuff." So yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, I like that little cameo. It's like the, it's like a Chemical Brothers one where the Chemical Brothers used to like little cameo at the end or a little cameo in the, in, in the corner. They uh, yeah. the, the the little cameo on the on the desk there was was fun. Um, and Idris, what a G! I'd love to interview you, interviews. That'd be quite cool. Um, cool. Uh, it must be nice. It must be nice as well. Just I was just thinking there while we we're listening to it. it. Must be nice that you kind of like we listened to the track before, and that's obviously in the kind of super cool underground. Then you've got tracks like that that are kind of more mainstream and tech housey, and then you've got obviously Iconopop, Pop, which is even you know more that new sped up sound. It must be nice to be able to kind of as a label just go like we like this sound we like that sound we can kind of we've got the space and the width to just sign music that we just absolutely love that bangs and and not worry about where it's sort of which which part of the you know which kind of kids are listening to it totally that's that's it makes it much more interesting you know also like worth mentioning for example the new single from sophie tucker jacare which is in, in portuguese that's definitely also something worth mentioning and maybe listening to which is a whole different lane but like Sophie Tucker has been with Ultra for so long and it's been amazing to see how they like just built and built and built and how 
how much they resonate. And that's also another act where they've been so clear in the message from the beginning in terms mm. of visual stuff and then see them now playing fucking primetime Coachella and just killing it. And it's just amazing. I love what they do. They've been, I've been at them on DT a few times. Like I love what they do. I love the, I love the vibe they've got. I, that, that last album was absolutely amazing as well. The, the um, tennis, the, what was it called? It was, but it had all the te- the tennis gear, and it looked really like the visual yeah. of them on stage was all the same. It looked sick, and it looked really cool. Yeah, and we did something with Wimbledon. Well, and it was just like all the things just like came together, you know. Oh, that's cool. Like that must be like that must be mental when you start working on these projects. And you're like you've got a much bigger budget to go right. What cool, really cool shit can we just like? That must be quite a, like a, a cool. Bra- like, do you have brainstorming sessions where you just sit around and go, "What cool shit can we do?" Or does it just like fall into place? I got to give credit to the U.S. team for that one, for sure. But, like, it's definitely a collective uh, decision. We also have, like, marketing brainstorms every Wednesday. And there's, like, I think Ultra is good at, collab- like, collaboratively work across all the teams, which kind of like a little family vibe, you know, which is very interesting. I found this I found this, uh, the Sophie Tucker track. Is it called Jack Array? Is that yeah. come out one month Jack ago? Ray. Yeah, yeah, I found it, I found it, I found it, I found it. Wicked. Let's play this one. go that was cool yeah. rob, Weiss, rob hayes like that in the chat amazing it's also fun to see again like another example on how different it is and they actually mm. managed to be successful with a portuguese speaking song that's like an interesting thing with them as well how they kind of dabble in both english and, and portuguese are they portuguese are like is that their is that part of their background like is they speak yeah, portuguese? Like- sophie speaks fluently um so that's why. Um, so there's so that guess I guess that must open up a whole new market for them from a from a from a single point from an audience point of view. Like they have had like so much success in South uh, South America and Brazil and stuff. We also right. did a big, big collaboration with Pablo Vitar, which is mm. like a big thing in Brazil and stuff. And those kind of collabs, of course, puts them on the map differently. The mm. same like. That's another thing, like doing collabs across the board is something that legit gives you a much stronger presence in, in other territories. Like, mm. So if you really want to move the needle in that sense as well, doing collabs with artists from other for other countries, et cetera, is definitely a good way to do so. Yeah, that's cool. And I guess, I guess that's, yeah, I agree. Like, I, we, we, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I agreed. And that Latin, that Latin house sound is definitely on the rise again. And that's, uh, and, and definitely kind of, f- you're feeling that a lot in Europe as well. Like, so it's interesting that that's, that they've yeah. kind of gone that way as well. And also even this Euros, Euro sound and like these like very, like the things that was like late, like nineties millennium start and stuff is really coming back. And it's just interesting to see these tendencies in different soundscapes where all of this ethereal, more like, cool low-key monotone stuff is it's like kind of on the way out i would say so it's mm. it's interesting to see how these changes is really dominant right now that's at least how i see it yeah yeah L- Lars, my my assistant he's all over that it's latin sound he loves it i bet i bet he'll he'll be loving that track oh he does yeah there he is in the chat yeah he loves it <laughs> cool <laughs> love it that leads me into like your job must be pretty full on. Um, my other job's pretty full on, and yours must be even more full on. So, how do you look after yourself? What do you like to do outside of music? What do you like to do outside of, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do out, out of resting? Yeah, so I still do listen a lot to music. To be fair, <laughs> I'm really I'm in good at getting my gym routines in. You know, yep. Uh, I need that. And it's like my space where I just zone out and I, I don't respond to anything on my phone, which is fucking blowing up constantly. I just, you know, the classic hang out with my friends, etc. I do write though. I write, um, uh, which is Books, a, a big, novels. You know, yeah. I finalized the poetry collection last year, which wow. is, it's a big thing of mine. And I'm currently writing a couple of other projects and, it's definitely something that I enjoy a lot and it kind of inspires me and it takes my mind off things. So yeah. That's really sick. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. And then what do you have coming up for the rest of the year? What's what's coming on the radar? Like obviously we spoke about some releases coming in July. What's what's further afield? What's 
what are the little exclusives or anything that we can give away that tell the people that are coming up that's going to be exciting for you? We have a very, very interesting new Solado collaboration coming out on Ultra here in the end of June, which I'm very excited about. Um, it's been a long time coming too. Um, nice. I love those what guys. Else? I, I absolutely yeah. love those guys. I'm actually going to go and see them play Park Live on Sunday as well, which is going to be fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Of course, we have Dope Dance, which is, we heard a snippet of from the live videos from TikTok, mm. uh, from Instagram with Tribalism, mm. which is like the first official single from them on Ultra. Uh, we have the Icona Pop album coming, which I'm very excited about. The Austin cool. Mills EP. Nice. Um, what else? What else? We have a lot of great stuff coming to be fair. I can't even remember all of it. Uh, we have a few trips, of course, going out for ADE. And a little holiday myself to Portugal with a friend. I'm excited about that. Cool. <laughs> just to I bet, in there. I bet, I bet, I bet just to stop. I bet, I bet just to stop and have your phone off. I bet. I bet that sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, AD, yeah. You're, you're, AD, you're going to be present again, which is cool. And I guess any of these producers that are making music and want to come and find you should come and start that, start that, you know, start being friends and start and, you know. Yeah. You know what? As I said before, always feel free to hit me up. It's never, uh, just try and keep it short. No long emails and stuff because then it's tricky to get through. But um, always feel free to help me up. I'm, I can't promise I'm getting back straight away, but I'm definitely <laughs> trying to. We always open, bring in new talent with old moms and it's never a no before we talk and listen, but so it always makes sense to kind of hit us up, but we are busy and we get a lot of requests. So bear with us, you know. <laughs> That's interesting. You're saying shorts. What are your, what are your three demo, demo yeses? You must have, to, must do a demo email. What's the, what's the best way to get a demo email? I think first of all, streaming links and not Dropbox links or downloadable files. Stream mm. so I can press play and easy. That's a, yep. a go. Reduce the uh, friction. Short intros, put your links up there so I don't have to search mm. for you because then already there I, I might give up just to put it out there. And and then, yeah, just keep it short and sweet and nice. It's, it's the easiest. Just think about the volume of stuff we get across. So this the more short and straight to the point, mm. uh, the easier for me to get through I'm excited about a new Salado record I love those guys I, I literally I think I was one of the first people to start writing about them when I first I met them before they even released records and then I started writing about them and so I love those guys and I love I love the I love everything about them and excited for more Salado records that's really cool well we'll make sure to give you a little snippet of it then <laughs> yeah I love Salado fucking brilliant and then what what's coming up this week you and I share a birthday a date so what are you doing for your birthday this week uh, happy birthday yeah. for th Friday it's so funny we share a birthday, honestly. <laughs> I know, right? I think the first time we guys we met each other was was that IMS maybe like four yeah. years ago, five years ago. Yeah, it yeah. was fun. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually having a big birthday party at the uh, House of Coco on Friday. Nice, nice. Which I'm very excited about with a few friends of mine DJing, and it's gonna be a fun night. It is a 30th birthday, so we have to celebrate. Oh, happy 30th. Wow, big 30. Yeah, it's a big 30. What about you? What are you up to? Uh, so I'm 44, so uh, I am doing not a lot. Uh, I'm going to the pub on Saturday. Uh, just chilled, friends, families. Like, it's a lot It's a lot more chilled. Very nice. kind of simple. I'm going to stream on Friday, obviously, so there'll be a fun of, fun of a Friday stream with a birthday thrown in there. Like, there'll probably be shots, so they'll probably be nonsense Amazing. on the stream on Friday. There Try and chime in and take a shot with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, drop in on Friday. Drop me a, drop me a text if you're about on Friday afternoon. One, same time, one till three, and let's have, let's have a shot on Friday afternoon. I'll try. <laughs> let's do it. Um, but yeah, happy birthday for Friday. Thank you, and same to you. Wicked. Right, is there any questions that we've not done? Oh, how many demos do you listen to daily? This is a big one. How many do you get? Well, you know, daily, I don't know, but I at least get hit up eh, a lot a week, to be fair. I don't even know how much, but I do like some days where I just sit and listen through new demos uh, because it's about like finishing your time with that. Mm. So I kind of collect it and I have like these notes and I go through it. 
because you also have to you time on the sign dances and the answers you're actually responsible for. So it's like mm-hmm. kind of like figuring that out. But there's a I listen to hundreds of songs today, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> nice that's nice though having days of listening to demos that'd be sick thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much for your time this afternoon this has been super interesting and super fun um, and I hope you've had a good time too yeah it was fun and thanks for having me and I hope everyone enjoyed it and got some helpful advice so yeah it was exciting and have a great birthday and I'll see you very soon see you soon bye bye cheers bye if you found this interview interesting, consider giving it a like and a comment. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm and let me know your biggest takeaway below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch. I'm back on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and you can check out the schedule from the link below as well to see who's coming up in my interview series. I'll see you in the next Twitch stream or the next YouTube video. I'll see you soon. Bye.